Hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. Today, I want to show you seven essential tools I take out on the road in case something happens, and if it does, I can fix it and still enjoy RV life. Well, hi, it's Jerry, and we've all had something break in our RV. It's just inevitable. It's not necessarily a quality issue, sure, some campers and RVs may be built a little quicker than others and you may have some maintenance issues that might pop up a little differently than others. Uh, we just have to face that. But the difference is, is we live in these and we're pulling them down a road and they bounce a lot. So small little things, sometimes big things happen. We've had drawers break, we've had a number of things that's happened, we've had plumbing issues, small. It's no different than living in a sticks and bricks home, but I think partly due to just travel and highways and bumps and so forth, we might introduce just a little bit more shock into our rolling homes and cause a few problems. So today, I want to share those seven essential tools that I believe that everyone needs in their camper. It's uh, to make those quick and simple fixes that most of us can do. If you're sl even slightly handy, you can fix a cabinet door or uh, fix a damaged slide in a drawer or take care of a little teeny minor plumbing issue. So let's get started with that. This is, a, this is my first one. This is a very inexpensive. Um, this is a Black & Decker uh, 20 volt lithium drill. Um, I have some drill bits with it and then I've got just a box of these uh, small bits that go with it. You hear it rattling but uh, the little replaceable bits, everything from the hex heads that you typically find inside of your camper, the little square bits, um, to Phillips, to regular. I, I can't share enough how many times I've used this. Sure, there are times that I have to use a screwdriver and I'll show you something that we use in that area. This is a great tool. It's very inexpensive. You can find these at Walmart. You can find them at your um, Ace Hardware. You can find them at uh, Lowe's. Uh, and I'm gonna put a link below of the one that I bought off of Amazon. But uh, if you choose to buy it off of Amazon and would rather do that, uh, then that would be great too. But Wow, I use this all the time, sometimes for just little basic repairs. Um, I'll put a video up here at the top, uh, if you haven't seen it, where I do a repair on a, uh, a cabinet drawer, and I use this. And it, it, it makes things go much quicker and much simpler. Uh, so the next item that I want to show is this. They call these 11-in-1 tools. You hear them 7-in-1, 11-in-1, so forth. An electrician friend of mine uh, shared with me that I should have one of these in my home. Well, I'll, I'll share this with you. Jerry will share this. You should have this in your camper. This one's by Greenlee. Klein Tool is another one that you'll find. Um, I made sure that I bought one that was good quality. I want it to be you know, firm, stay, stay together. Um, I don't want to lose my little bits. I want to make sure that they've got little bearings to hold them in place. They're not that expensive. Um, and when you compare this to having a drawer full of screwdrivers and bit drivers and things like that, um, this is really a bargain. So this one's a, this one I bought, um, I think off of Amazon. Um, I think you can find this brand at Lowe's. I can't remember exactly, but don't hold me to that. Things change a lot. Why use this? This is, you know, a large uh, flat screwdriver. You pull this out, flip it over. It's a large hex head. This is a nut driver. I forget what size. I think a 5 16th, something like that. I can then pull this out, flip it over. And this is where you start getting into your camper repairs. These are, this has got square drivers. So I've got, you know, a, a small square driver. Um, I've got a larger square driver. I can flip this over in this direction. And I've got a, a smaller uh, Phillips bit. And then I've got a, a smaller screwdriver bit. And I've got a larger hex head a nut driver here. Boy, these things are just handy. And how nice it is that, oh, I pull out the drawer, I see it's a little loose, or I open up a cabinet and I see it's a little loose. And instead of it getting worse and worse and worse and then damage occurring, just run over to the drawer, you know, flip this out, you know, find the bit that works, tighten everything up, off we go again. So these are very inexpensive. And what a tool. I mean, it's just so many 
different ones and a good quality one with a nice rubber grip, insulated grip. Just love it. And it's got a heavy base on it. Yeah, uh, I think in one of the videos, you actually see me using this as a, as a hammer to, uh, to, to uh, pound down inside. Actually, I think this one's called a 9-in-1. But anyway, there's so many different versions of these things. It's a wonderful tool. Just absolutely love it. Uh, this is one. Oh, have you ever been to your campground and then you put your water hose on the water spigot or you put your pressure regulator on the water spigot and for some reason you put it on a little bit tight and then when you got ready to go, you could not loosen that thing up to save your life. Uh, it didn't matter, and especially like if Joan came in and said, hey, I'll go start unhooking everything up while you go you know, back the truck in and get it set. Joan doesn't have the strong grip in her hand like I have. And um, so this is what I call a plumber's wrench. Uh, they've got a lot of different names to them. Some are called slip wrenches, things like that. You'll see that this one has um, the serrated jaws. And you can just grab this thing, set it up, boom, little twist, and just loosen up that uh, water hose in just a couple seconds. You know, it's the difference in pulling out a pocket knife and cutting the hose off and driving it off and then having to go out and buy another hose because you can't get it fixed. You're the last, you know, you're way back in the back of a campground in a state or federal park and you can't find anybody to help you that might have one of these. Lifesaver, they're inexpensive. You can buy them anywhere. And, um, you know, I've used them to fix my sink. Uh, when I had a little something loose there, you can adjust it small enough to be able to, and it's got enough leverage that you can just give it a little bit of a push and, and make it tight. These things work fantastic. Next item is a good 16 ounce hammer. Um, no, I'm not going to be building a house <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. But there are those things that just have to be tapped in place and a good quality hammer. Um, you don't have to have, you know, a, a sledgehammer or anything. I use it for tent stakes. Um, I use it to just tap things in place or loosening things up. A good quality plumber's hammer is fantastic. The next item, oh my goodness, this has saved my life. This is, there's so many different brands of this that you can find just about anywhere. This is a 38 piece, they call it a mechanics tool set. This one's by Husky. Look, you can find them everywhere. I'm not pitching a brand. I'm not even pitching 38 pieces. Um, what I'm sharing is that you need some, you need some basic tools. Um, this one is a nice socket set and there's always gonna be those minor repairs that you're gonna to have to make while you're out on the road. I like this one that it's got a set of deep sockets. Um, it's got some nut drivers. You can see all the different types of things here. This is what they call a 3-8 set. And um, you know, uh, I'll give you for instance, last, uh, last winter we were in Nashville and I went out to crank the truck, the big F-350, and not only was one battery dead, but both batteries were dead as a hammer and um, I, was, I was stuck. So um, I called the uh, local auto parts place, asked them if they delivered, and they said, sure. I told them the two batteries I needed. They brought them to the campground. And, and to make it even worse, I stood out in the rain. <laughs> it was raining like crazy. I was out in the rain and replaced both of my batteries. If I wouldn't have had this tool set, I couldn't have done it. Uh, you know, I just had to have it. Last thing I want is a pair of pliers and I'm messing everything up. These are very inexpensive. Um, I've used them for other things as well, just little minor repairs to tweak this or tweak that. But um, it's so inexpensive. Um, I just, I don't know what I would do without it. It's just great to be able to have it. So several different brands of this. This is, like I said, this is a Husky 38 piece. I'll put a link down below in the show notes of some that you might be able to consider. Uh, here's the last item as far as a tool. This is a voltometer. This is a digital voltometer. Uh, how do I use this? Well, <clears throat> when, before I plug into a uh, a campground. I always, and uh, there's several videos on this and I'll probably end up doing one, but I always make sure that my voltage is good. Uh, there's a way to be able to do that to make sure if I'm going to a 50 amp connection that I've got, you know, 115 or better volts, 110 or better volts. Um, and because I don't want to damage any of the electronics that are inside the, the camper. 
And uh, the other thing that I do is make sure that the skin, the outer metal portion of that uh, pedestal um, doesn't have any power on it, say from a, a loose ground or something like that. Absolutely imperative. It's a great tool. They're simple to use. Uh, there's tons and tons and tons of videos on how to be able to use these. They're very, very basic. This one is good for AC voltage and DC voltage. Um, I had a little issue with um, the uh, cable for the satellite to where a connector came loose somewhere inside the camper. I have no idea where it was at. But I was able to troubleshoot it with this using the, volt, the ohm side to be able to check resistance. I know I'm talking electronics. That might be foreign to some of you. But there's plenty of ways to be able to, um, you know, I t I'll share this with you. If you're interested in knowing how to use a volt ohm meter, put it down in the show notes. If I get enough folks that says, hey, do a video on using a volt ohm meter, I'll create a video for that. It's, it's a, but it's a great tool. It's a good diagnostic tool. It's got hundreds and hundreds of different things that you can do with it. And it's about three or four functions. It's in, these things, I don't know, I think this was $25. I'll put a link in Amazon on this one too. But again, and a very, 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 very important tool. A light quits working. Uh, check your fuses. Oh, I could go on and on and on. Very, very helpful. Now here's the last item. So that's my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items that I talked about. But there's one other thing that is not a tool, but you should have. And this is my jar or little medicine container of screws. Yes, screws. I've got long screws. I've got short screws. I've got wood screws. I've got metal screws. Um, I keep, you know, a handful of these of varying sizes. Go to the hardware store, buy some good ones. Don't buy that cheap, you know, 10 cent junk because the first time you use it, you'll strip the head out of it or worse, you'll break it and then you'll have a hard time. Buy you a handful of good quality screws. Um, you can tell that uh, I've opened up the packs and these are the leftovers. Something's going to fall out. Again, we've got vibration. We've got so many things going on. Something is going to get lost. It's going to back off, fall somewhere. You'll never find it again. You're going to want to repair it while you're out there. Having some screw to be able to fix that cabinet or, you know, put the knob back on the stove or <laughs> whatever it may be, get you some screws. So there you go. That's my basic toolkit. Is that everything that I take with me when Joan and I are out on the road? No, no. But those are those, you know, an inexpensive toolkit if you've just started camping or if you hadn't been camping long and um, you've, been, you've gone out on the road and something broke and you said, oh, if I only had. You can fix a large percentage of your problems if, like I said, if you're base, you know, if you've got some basic skills uh, to just run in a screwdriver or, you know, uh, fix a loose bolt or a loose nut or run a small, easy electrical problem, find a blown fuse, those types of things, that kit should be able to do a large portion of the problems that are out there. Anything that's larger than that, if somebody can't help you in the campground, it's time to get one of the maintenance guys out there to fix that problem for you. But I think that this will handle most of your basic maintenance tools. I use them all the time. Something's all the time going wrong. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in knowing how to use that volt -ohm meter, I was a telecommunication engineer for a long, long time and used a volt -ohm meter daily, and especially when I was in my maintenance days, used it all the time, all the time, all the time. So I'll be glad to put together a simple video to show you how to use a volt -ohm meter if you're interested. If you would just make a comment in the notes and say, hey, I have no idea how to use a digital voltmeter. Would you do a video on it or something like that? It would be my pleasure to create a video. Be glad to do that for you to kind of mm, just show you how to use the basics of that. So I have my tools and when something breaks, I'm able to fix most of the little problems that pop up inside the RV. And you know what that does? It just really helps me love RV life. <laughs>